Jeremy here with Simple Little Life. In the last video I uploaded, we made this knife right here, and this is the, uh, we called it a crooked finger. In this video, we're gonna make a sheath for that crooked finger. Now, my approach to making leather sheaths, as well as Kydex, is very utilitarian. Ultimately, I mean, if you're making and selling knives, typically people want some way to carry that knife. So that's ultimately all I'm trying to do here is trying to create a way to carry a knife, to protect the knife, and then to protect the person carrying the knife. So yeah, very, very simple. There's not a lot of fancy stuff going on here. Um, I have a lot of respect for people, for, for craftsmen that can make incredible knife sheaths. And I've seen some just, un the leather work is almost as impressive as the knife. And it is so cool to see that. Eventually, you know, I want to continue to learn to get to that point. Um, but for right now, I need to be able to know that whatever I make is just going to work and do its job. So this is going to be a super, super simple um leather sheath we're going to make here now obviously right right here i'm templating the knife uh, the sheath and this to me is the hardest part uh sometimes i'll go through so many different versions you can actually tell the template i'm using now was a different one than i'd shown just previously drawing it out and uh, sometimes i find it takes four or five different iterations before i find one that i really really am happy with the fit and the way it works with the knife so uh once i've got that template done i usually do that on a thicker cardstock material that way it'll stand up and i'll be able to use it multiple times then I'll just trace it to the um, the leather and I do that with a like an awl I just kind of scratch the lines in there and then cut those out with a razor blade and a little exacto knife now the part that I'm gonna cut out right here is called the welt essentially the welt is like the little middle section of a sandwich and you take the two pieces of leather fold them over and then you put the welt in between them and the stitching will actually go through the welt now this knife a sheath is going to be a fold over design. So I just need a welt on the one side. If you're doing like a full two piece construction, so you had a top and a bottom, uh, you'd probably have the welt going around the entire perimeter of the sheath. But since this is a fold over, like I said, we just need this welt to go where the blade is gonna be. And if it doesn't really make sense, hopefully it kind of does as it progresses. You see what we're gonna do is gonna glue this in this position. And then when we stitch the leather together, those stitches will be right in the middle of the welt. And that way the blade isn't gonna be able to cut the stitches. It's gonna be resting on that leather. And uh, it just, it just kind of gives a little bit of clearance for the blade there as well. So once we've got all of our pieces cut out and it's really just the two, uh, again, a very, very simple sheath. Uh, what I'm gonna do is measure out and mark where the fold happens, where I want it to happen. I'll take a straight edge and I'll mark that line. And then I just use these old carving tools that I had since I was a kid. I sharpen them up. One thing that I've really noticed with leather is that your tools need to be sharp, like super sharp. The sharper, the better. And I'm just kind of cutting a groove in the middle there just to kind of help that fold happen in exactly that spot. It just makes it a lot easier. I've tried a few sheets without this step and it's just, it doesn't look as good and it also kind of fights you the whole way. So what I do is I take about half of the material thickness down at that mark right there. Now this tool that I'm using right here is called an edge beveler and basically it kind of knocks that hard 90 degree edge of your leather and it puts like a radius cut into it. It's really, really cool. This is one of those tools that I never used in the beginning and then once I started using it, I was like, wow, this is, this is really great. And uh, I'll do right now what I'm doing is all the parts that I can't get to once the whole leather sheath has been sewn up. And then we'll be using that tool later on as well. So right there, I just put in my maker's mark, little stamp that I made. And I'm just marking out where I'm going to glue and sew the belt loop. Uh, the main reason for that is that I don't want the glue to land outside, you know, where the two parts come together. Uh, I find that sometimes interferes with your dyeing process and coloring the leather. So I want to keep everything nice and clean. And uh, I'm just using a, uh, what do they call these things? Uh, they call these like a diamond chisel. Uh, basically just pounds in the, the holes. I used to actually drill all of my holes with a really, really small drill bit on a drill press. Uh, but I really like these stitching awls or chisels a lot better. They work so much nicer. So now I'm just taking some contact cement and uh, put it together and put a clamp on it let it dry now that it's dried we're going to come back and i'm going to transfer those holes all the way through to the actual leather sheath itself and then there's a step here coming up that i do and a lot of people give me some bad feedback on it uh, i'm taking a stitching awl and i'm running it through to just kind of basically enlarge those holes a little bit now when you're using the diamond stitching awls a lot of people really like the look of that diamond hole but it's a little bit tight that, that I found for the thread that I use. And honestly, I can't tell. I mean, I'm sure if you were doing a 
properly, if you had a little more finesse, you could actually notice that they were diamond holes. But I literally can't see a difference whether I, you know, leave the just the diamond shape in the hole or if I round them out with that all. So I just round them out with the all because it makes it so much easier. So now that we've got that done, we're ready to sew uh, this up. And this belt loop needs to be sewn before we fold the sheath over. Now, one little trick here is uh, you take the tag in, you, you thread the needle, the eye of the needle, you take the tag end a little bit longer than the needle, then you stab your working end, the actual thread that you'll be running through, take that tag end, stick it through the little loop you've just created, and then pull that whole issue down. And now you've got kind of, you, you know, you've got that end secured. I mean, obviously, if you yanked really hard, it would come off, but for sewing, it you can pull it through the holes, pull it through your leather, and it doesn't come out. And it's really nice not having to worry about the needle coming off of the thread. And uh, so here we go again. We're just stabbing it through the the string there we've got a little loop there we put the tag end through the loop and then just pull the working end voila we are ready to sew all right so this here is called a saddle stitch very very simple ultimately you'll kind of start out you know in the middle get both of your working ends uh even and then you go through the next hole uh, from one side and then the other hole putting them through the same hole pulling it tight move to the next hole push it through i kind of keep a little tension on there i grab the other needle push it through the same hole and give it a one, two yank -a -roo. Now the thread that I like to use, it's a braided thread. It's not twisted. It's actually braided. So it makes it fairly nice and thick. And it's also waxed so that when you pull it, it actually keeps a lot of tension on it. It doesn't come loose. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just finish this up. Uh, I end up back stitching a few times. So basically repeating some of the holes that I've done. And then we'll just kind of tie it off on the backside, just using two regular, what they call overhand knots. I don't know. Anyways, we're going to take the thread here. We're going to cut that. And then we're going to take a little lighter and just kind of melt it in. Being as it's a nylon type thread, it will melt. And it's not going to come undone now. Really easy way. Again, I know there's ways that you can actually bury your knot or kind of finish everything off within, <laughs> within your stitches. But I just don't know how to do that. So I, I do it like this instead. Now this little piece here is just a super duper thin piece of leather. I buy it in a roll and I'm just putting it over the stitching and ultimately this is just to kind of protect the threading. You never know in case a tip of the blade or something went by you would hate for it to to cut through that that thread and so it's just kind of an extra level of protection. So now we're actually going to be putting in our welt and uh, you can see we've marked out where the welt is going to go on both sides. And then we put on our contact cement. This is a water-based contact cement that I used. Um, I'm fairly happy with it. The one nice thing is you have a little bit of time. Like, you know, after about 10 seconds, you could remove it. And it's not going to be too tightly bonded. Um, but it's, it, it does hold really well. I've actually been really, really impressed with that. So I'll actually just glue on one side and let that dry. Again, we had all those clamps on there. Those are just little cheap old hardware clamps. And then I glued pieces of leather to them so that I don't end up putting impressions into the leather or like marring up the leather with the clamps. So now we're just going to finish up the other side here, get that glued on. And then again, we're going to clamp that and let that dry. Typically, I like to let it dry for about a day just to make sure it's really good and dry before we start sewing. What we're going to do now, and this is kind of something that's changed for me, is that once I've got everything glued up, I kind of trim it all. And then I actually take it out to my belt grinder and I smooth the edges down on the belt grinder. Now you could do this with like regular old bell sand or anything. I use a 80 grit, very, very coarse. I try to do as little as possible, but ultimately I'm just trying to get those three layers of leather nice and flush and flat. Once that's done, I'll take this edge beveling tool again and bevel the edges and that just really cleans it up. So now at this point, we've got a really nice clean, even edge on that side. Uh, now this here is a stitch groove cutter and you see it's kind of got an arm on the one side that acts as a guide to make sure it's all nice and centered and then the other side is actually a little hole cutter it's like a it's a really cool little tool again i'll put some links in the description below and you see it just pulls that little leather out of there and that way when you put your stitching in there it's going to be nice and flush it won't sit proud of the sheath itself i think the big advantage to that is that that way you know with the thread being kind of underneath the leather it's a little bit more protected. You know, if you're rubbing up against rocks or something like that, or abrasions, it's less likely to cut the thread when it's kind of buried into the leather there. And again, we're gonna use our uh, stitch hole chisel, thingy majiggers, whatever they are. I'm gonna pound in our holes. Uh, I've got this one here and it's a two prong, so it's nice. It just basically gives you nice even spacing between each hole. And then I also have, I think it's like a five or a six tooth one 
for if you ever get into nice straight sections, you can do more than just essentially one new hole at a time. You can do like five new holes. Works really well. Again, these are fairly inexpensive. And um, when I used to drill these out, eh, I don't know, it's just such a pain. I really like this method. It's noisier. It's obviously not quiet when you're banging around, especially on a wood work table or something like that, but works really nicely. So here, uh, this is actually the end of a stitching all of mine that broke and I put it in a vice grip. And so what I'll do is the one side that I've hammered through, I'll have a look and I'll just make sure we're lining up in the middle of the stitching groove. Sometimes when I'm hammering, I'll go all the way through. Sometimes those two stitching grooves don't line up perfect. So what I'll do is I'll actually kind of angle my, my little awl as I'm stinging it through to make sure I come out in the center of the stitching groove on the back of the sheath. Uh, but what I go, what I do is I go through the front side, you know, spin it all around, enlarge that hole. Then I go from the back side as we're doing right here. And that way I've got a really nice uh, way for stitching. I, I just find, you know, when you're doing this stitching, if you're fighting with every single stitch, you know, to get the needles through, it's such an unenjoyable process. I really don't like it. I mean, it's not like these needles are falling through there. I still have to push them, uh, but it's just, I don't know. I really like that. And like I said, I, I can't see the diamond pattern the way that I do things. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Not sure, but Here's a slightly better look at a saddle stitch. So you kind of stick it through one of the sides there. I keep a little tension on it just to keep it out of the way so that I'm not gonna actually puncture the thread and then pull it uh, through the other side, give it a yank. Move to the next hole, take our needle. Sometimes I use a stitching pony for this, sometimes I don't. A stitching pony, if you don't know, it's just like a, kind of like a wooden clamp thing that holds leather work. Um, but for the sake of the video, I thought I'd just kind of do it by hand here. You don't need a stitching pony to stitch leather. And sometimes I prefer doing it just like this. It's something I enjoy doing, you know, if I'm waiting, you know, for my kids at activities or watching TV or something. I really love uh, some of the processes. In fact, sometimes what I'll do is I'll make a whole bunch of leather sheaths uh, just to the glue stage. So everything's glued up, uh, kind of cut down and everything. And then all I have to do is stitching and I'll take like three or four sheaths with me and I'll just sit there and stitch away. And it's so, I don't know, almost meditative. I really enjoy uh, leather sheaths once you get into them. Once you kind of figure out a process that actually works and you're not fighting with everything or fighting to figure stuff out, really, really become fairly enjoyable. And again, we're just going to melt off the uh, the tag ends there. Y you can see that. I mean, it's not it's not the most gorgeous sheath on earth. I, I do not make beautiful leather sheaths, but I make functional leather sheaths. And that's kind of my goal. I want to keep everything clean. I, I don't want it to be hideous. I don't want it to look like some janky old, you know, something that you picked up on the floor of an old barn or something. Um, but, you know, I, I think it works for now. And again, always want to get better. Always want to improve. And, uh, you know, certain projects... I've been asked to do some slightly fancier things with sheaths and I have done those and so I just need to do more of those I think ultimately. Now this is one big step that I changed in my sheath making recently and that's switching up to like this Faberings, I forget, I don't know how you pronounce it, but the actual proper dye. Previously I was using a water-based dye and it was terrible. It's called like EcoFlow or something like that. I don't know. It sucked. It really, really did suck. It, it didn't dye. This is like an oil and alcohol based dye and I mean you put it on the leather and boom it sucks in deep dry super fast and it's so even so uh, if you're having issues with the finishes of your leather and the colors maybe try different dye because that has made a huge difference for me and what I just did here I just took a little paintbrush and I'm painting on an edge coat again this is something that I've only started doing in the last couple of weeks and it's just a really nice high sheen really long lasting edge protector um, you got to be careful with this stuff that I don't get it onto the flat parts of the sheath you see me wiping it off in a few times here uh, but it just finishes off that edge really really nicely I will go and lightly burnish it uh, but I find the burnishing has a little bit less of effect when I actually use the edge coat than when I don't and then I'm finishing everything off after it's dried for about a day with some mink oil. This again is that Faberings Golden Mink Oil. Really love the smell of that stuff. Does a great job of protecting. And uh, there you go. Very, very simple way to make a sheath. I, I, I know a lot of people are kind of hesitate on making leather sheaths because they, they think it's so difficult and complicated. Um, but you know what? If you just kind of approach it the way that I have, it's like, you know what? This doesn't have to be the most beautiful thing on earth. I just want it to hold up well. I want it to be strong. It can actually be really, really quite simple and very enjoyable to make leather sheaths. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.